you're going to stand over here and ask the questions, okay? Yeah. And keep an eye on the finish line. Make sure the right person is stepping forward. Yeah. And make sure nobody cheats. Okay. All right, everyone else, let's get into a line. Over here. Okay. Um, oh, and we need a finish line. Got one. <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> Ta -da. Ta -da. Amazing. Okay, so you all have Jordan's number, right? Yeah. Okay, hold on. I just have to get my stuff together. Let's go, Jordan. Come on. Quicker. Okay, okay. Uh, first question. What department do the following programs and services fall under? Go Safe Escort Service, Residence Watch and Security Officers, Emergency and Blue Light Phones, and YorkU.ca slash safety. Uh, the winning text is uh, Megan. Yeah, yeah uh, it's security services. Um, okay, next question. Um, let's go. Oh, let's go, Jordan. Okay. What online application form is used to apply for things like scholarships, bursaries, and on-campus employment programs that every student should fill out? Um, yeah, Serena. It's the student financial <gasps> profile. <sighs> next. Um, this is supposed uh, to be a race. Uh, hold on. Oh. Hold on. Okay. Where can you go for stuff like resume help or interview skills? Um, yeah, Caleb, it's the Career Center. Yes. <laughs> Next, uh, what are the Career Center, Writing Center, and Counseling and Disability Services a part of? Um, Megan, yeah, yes. again, Learning Commons. Okay, um, okay. Come on, Jordan, uh, faster, okay. quicker. Who is the best person to go to when you need information and guidance around your uh, academic program? Um, yeah, Serena, it's the academic advisors. Oh, this is so intense! I'm done! I'm not doing this anymore! What happened, Jordan? Jordan? Stop, Megan. I, I know what you're gonna say. And it's not just the learning thing, okay? It's more like everything. I have a headache. Do you want some Advil or something? No, thanks. You don't have to talk if you don't want to. Look, I don't want this to turn into some pity party or movie of the week bull. I'm just dealing, okay? With... No! Like, when I think of all the shit I have to do, and classes, how are you all so calm? I couldn't even believe all the stuff that happens at that orientation business. And I think about my mom back home, and I know it's stupid, but whenever I think about it, I get this headache, and I just want to forget it. Anyway, I'm sorry for the drama. I'm sorry I yelled at you, Serena. Just give me a few minutes and we'll start back up at the race. You know what? Just forget about this stupid text race, okay? I, I understand. What? You're like the most ready out of all of us. No, she's not. Caleb! What? <gasps> You're not. She's not. <laughs> she doesn't have her books yet. She's all moody and stressed. Freaking out on me just a moment ago about all this stuff. You think she has it together? She's a mess. She's a hot, hot mess. Then keys! Right. He's right. Besides, Megan's the one who's got it all together anyway. What the what? Hell no. Maybe I come off that way, but no. You think I'm ready for this shit? You think I'm ready to tell one more person that I'm a dance major and have them look me up and down as if I couldn't possibly be a dance major? Who does this girl think she is? No, sir. I'm not looking forward to that and I'm definitely not put together. I don't know. You're the one who's all zen around here. Uh, no. <laughs> Jordan, I feel like you're having tension headaches. Come on. You're just anxious. I mean, we all are. Good afternoon, and welcome to the final presentation of the day.
My name is Catherine Salol, and I'm the Director of Student Community and Leadership Development, which is in the, the division, division of Students at York University. I'm also a co-lead of a number of initiatives that relate to student uh, transitions. And you're experiencing one. We're experiencing one right now. What you're uh, experiencing is an excerpt from the text race, which was wit written by Kawa Ada, who was a residence life coordinator, produced and directed by Vanier College Productions, and performed by an exceptional cast of brilliant students. <laughs> this, past, this past fall, this amazing cast performed this play 15 times over a course of a few days across many academic uh, orientations. And I was in the audience for every single one, and I enjoyed every single one. But it's not about me. The, the purpose of the, the play was for, to support students as, as they were transitioning in. Some of the object objectives were to create a common experience among all of the students who were transitioning across the various orientations, to highlight some of the services and resources available to incoming students, as well as to acknowledge some of the anxieties and tensions that students experience when they start university. They've left, but they will be back, but I think this is a great time to give them a round of applause. Again. And I feel sorry that I actually had to cut them off because it truly is a, is a great play, but they will be back for the, for the Q&A at the end. Um, we did uh, ask our first year students what they thought of the play. We did get some feedback. And our measurements indicated that we were very successful in uh, getting some good, some good feedback. And there's one that I wanted to, to show you. Uh, being able to relate to one of the characters in the skit, I was able to feel more comfortable about my transition to university. I didn't feel that my problem was uncommon. I felt relieved that there are so many resources in York that could help me. The, place was, the play was funny and worth my time. So that was just one of a whole bunch of great feedback that we got. So meeting students where they're at by giving them information that they need, and only the information that they need at any given uh, point in time, is key for any project that's supposed to support students. And so over the next 45 minutes, I, along with a handful of colleagues, will be profiling some of the AI AIF initiatives that relate to student success, and specifically uh, supporting students as they transition in and through university, or through the first year. And uh, every single one of the project has a unique place on the first year student continuum. And let's just stop and look at this continuum for a second because this is a continuum. <laughs> like it's not even just one screen, it's, it's three. It's bigger than yours, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So this continuum begins uh, with a, the offer of admission, and it concludes uh, uh, during uh, April exams. So every single spot on this continuum has unique needs that each of the projects attempted to uh, and tried to address. But what does a first year student need, and when do they need it? Luckily, there's much literature for us to draw upon to help us answer these questions. And I'm going to introduce you to uh, Martha Rogers. She is um, uh, going to highlight some of the research that's out there and a theoretical framework that we used as we built some of these programs. Martha is uh, the Master of Stahn College Associate Professor in Nursing and Special Advisor of Student Experience to the Dean in the Faculty of Health. Have a look at this. The Academic Innovation Fund has provided an opportunity for 16 teams or individuals to incubate ideas that aim to enhance the student experience and support student success. Of these, several projects being highlighted focus specifically on helping students make an effective transition to university and to be successful in their first year. The AIF initiative has brought together student service professionals and academics as we explore the current literature and research in order to create evidence-informed programs. As many know, research in the area of student success has exploded in higher education during the last decade. This explosion has been the result of increasing accountability in higher education, a growing awareness of the intersection of student success and retention, and an understanding of the theoretical and empirical evidence associated with student engagement and success. There are many theoretical lenses from which to understand student success. As Hardy Cox and colleagues have noted, 
the lenses can be clustered into three. There are those theories that emphasize the developmental tasks students must accomplish in order to be successful. Other theories come at student success from a cognitive structural perspective, and still others shift the emphasis from the student to the university environment. This latter focus has formed the basis of the widely used National Survey of Student Engagement. Regardless of the lens one employs, the important point is that there is a strong scholarly foundation for understanding and planning student success programs. Selecting one theoretical model over another is really a matter of the determination of fit. After reviewing many theories, we selected the work of Alf Lizio, an Australian academic at Griffith University. Lizio's research has focused on the needs of students as they transition to and make their way through the first year of university studies. His research has formed the basis for the model known as the five senses of success. The five senses include a sense of capability that is developed through an understanding of the roles and expectations of being a student at a university. A sense of resourcefulness or knowing how to navigate the university systems and where to turn for help. A sense of academic culture or the unique values and expectations of being at a university. And a sense of connectedness with peers, staff and faculty. And finally, a sense of purpose or an understanding of what a student can contribute to or gain from university experience. When these senses are addressed through intentional programs, first year students will be more engaged, more satisfied and more successful. The Lizio model has enabled a common planning framework that has brought together multiple campus partners in the collaborative creation of innovative programs. Further, it has, has helped to form the basis of a comprehensive evaluation protocol. The Lizio model has provided a guide to thinking about, constructing, and evaluating our student success programs for first year. Thank you, Martha. So as Martha mentioned, uh, we, have, we are using the Lizio model to guide some of the development of our, of our programs. And as we've used, we're using that to guide the development, I'm also going to use it as a guide to help me take you through this presentation. So we're going to start with a sense of resourcefulness. This is a big campus. Think about the first time you stepped foot onto this campus, or any university campus. And now rewind and think about what it was like when you first started in your first year. It's really difficult to navigate a place like this. And so when we build a sense of resourcefulness in our incoming students, we're equipping them with the skills and the knowledge and the attitudes to navigate the campus, its resources, its systems, as well as where to know, find out where to, where to go to help, for help, okay? So enter the first project that I wanna highlight, and that's the online enrollment uh, system. So the, the online enrollment project endeavors to transform the mandatory on-campus new student enrollment appointment to a staff-supported and monitored online environment. Moving to this format will help to ensure consistency in messaging and information as well as to provide students with a more accessible and convenient platform from which to begin the transition to university. So we are piloting the online enrollment uh, system to 600 students who are starting in the kinesiology program. And we actually started on Monday, and to my knowledge, we've enrolled 50 students successfully. So on the screen now, what I want to show you is a montage or a sampling of the kinds of things that uh, students will see as they go through the online system. And just keep in mind that um, it, the pilot is for kinesiology students, so some of the language will be kin-specific. Okay, watch this. Hello and welcome to UStart at York University. Thank you for choosing York, Canada's leading interdisciplinary teaching and research university. My name is Julia and I'm here to help you through your first steps as a York University student. This is the UStart Enrollment Program and it will introduce you to the topics you need to understand to be successful at York. These topics include gaining an understanding of your major program and degree requirements, learning how to read the lecture schedule, learning how to select and enroll in courses, and learning where to locate university policies. Here is an example of the course code that you will find in the timetable, AP SOSC 
1149.00. Now, let's break that down. The first two letters represent the faculty offering the course. In this example, AP stands for the Faculty of Liberal Arts and Professional Studies. The second acronym refers to the subject being offered. For our example, SOSE stands for Social Science. Before enrolling in your courses, you need to understand the important dates of an academic session and where to find them on York's website. Once you have selected the appropriate session, a table will appear with all the important dates for that academic period. Here you will find important information about course start and end dates, examination periods, and university closures. You are required to take a total of eight PECANs, including one from each of the six areas plus two elective PECANs. The areas of PECANs which are core for kinesiology are aquatics, team sports, individual and dual sports, dance and gymnastics, track and field, and emergency care. Now let's take a look at what your overall degree will look like. You will need 18 general education credits, 18 credits taken outside of the major, 60 kin or major credits, and 24 additional or elective credits. Don't forget, you must also take 8 PECAN courses. Of the 120 credits you need to graduate, 36 must be upper level credits or courses taken at the 3000 and 4000 level. Before you are able to add a course, you must first look up its catalog number. That can be found under course timetable. First, search course by subject. Select the session in which the course will take place and find the subject of the course. For help with specific questions regarding your major requirements in kinesiology and health science or kin, or if you need help enrolling in courses, you should visit the program office. The kin office is located in 341 Bethune College. So remember, if during your travels towards graduation, you find yourself needing help, be sure to seek academic advising. The U Start program is our commitment to support you through the summer as you prepare for your first year as a university student. We hope that you take advantage of everything the program has to offer and we wish you all the best for your first year here at York. So let me introduce you to Julia Salzman. Julia is a third year student majoring in health policy. She has been a volunteer student ambassador for three years and has served as president of the Keele Campus Student Club. For the past, last two years, Julia has worked as a student advisor supporting enrollment presentations for new students. Hi. Hi. How are you? <laughs> Good. How are you? Good. I don't know if anyone has noticed, but she is the face of uh, the, the videos. <laughs> <laughs> has anyone stopped for your autograph yet? Just my grandma. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Just wait. 600 <laughs> students are going through, so I think that there will be maybe more requests. So you are in a really unique position to actually speak about the enrollment appointment because you have gone through it as a student, and also you've been a student advisor for the past couple of years and helping students uh, through, their, through their enrollment process. So can you speak about how you think this is going to help um, the students that you're gonna be advising this summer um, going through this, through, through this project? What kind of impact will this have on them? I definitely, without a doubt, can say that students will have a positive impact after they've reviewed this online enrollment appointment. Um, like Catherine said, I actually lived through the um, in-person appointment, lived to tell the tale. Um, and I also, like she said, I've, I'm now facilitating the in-person enrollment appointment. And just based on my experience, when I came, first came to York um, and I did the in-person enrollment appointment, it was a hot and it was a muggy day. So I was already sweating and stressed and nervous before I even got down to the dingy old uh, computer lab where we do our in-person appointments. Um, it just felt like I was being talked at for two hours. There was just so much information. Uh, the caliber of information, I just wasn't used to it. I left going, what just happened? Um, and they expected me to start in September. Mm -hmm. So I definitely think that with the online um, enrollment appointment, students now have the opportunity to view this information wherever they want. So that's, to students, that's such a monumental thing because students can now literally do this in the comfort of their own home, in their favorite chair, um, mm -hmm. and have support all around them. It also gives students the chance to do this whenever they want. So if they have this urge at three in the morning, all of a sudden they're excited to come to York, it's finally hit them, <laughs> they can do it online at that time. Um, and I think the most important part is students can review the information as often as they like. So they literally can press 
uh, pause, rewind, and replay to get all of that information again. And it's just amazing for students because literally the information and the knowledge is accessible at their fingertips. So I think all of this together just makes the online enrollment appointment just that much better. And you just see it's just another example of how York just goes beyond, um, beyond the bar. Right. And so, Julia, like, take your student advisor hat off for a second <laughs> and uh, rewind time and become a first year student again. Uh, you spoke a little bit about uh, your experience going through the enrollment appointment, but, but uh, how do you think that this might, might have impacted your first year experience? I definitely think that I would have been less stressed. Mm -hmm. um, and being in health policy, being in the faculty of health, we all know what stress does to the body. Um, <laughs> so uh, I definitely think that if, I've ha if I had this um, option, I, I would have been more comfortable. I would have been able to, um, I guess, absorb all of the information. It's all important. It's all relevant. You, all, you have to um, build on this information throughout your entire university career. Um, so yeah, I just feel like I would have been less stressed. Like I said, my appointment was not a pretty picture. Um, if my York ID is proof of that, I do charge <laughs> to show it. Um, and yeah, so just I just think I would have had just a more stressless um, time. And I think that also would have probably gave me more confidence in my first year. When I did my enrollment appointment, I felt as if I was the only one feeling like this. I felt if I feel that if I had this option, I would have done better in my first year, got involved sooner because I felt comfortable. I would have felt confident coming into university. Great. Thank you so much. No um, so you'll come back and, and join us at the end for the Q&A. Thank you. Great. Thanks so much, Julia. Excellent. At this time, I also wanted just to acknowledge uh, Rob Bishop. He's not here today. He's the, a the AF lead for this project, but I heard he broke his ankle this morning. So uh, if you see him hobbling around campus in the next couple days, give him a high five and say congratulations because he's, he's done a great job. So um, moving on to the next sense, uh, sense of connectedness. I can't think of a better way uh, to make a new student feel welcome and part of the York community by addressing the sense of connectedness. It's all about getting them to connect to other people, whether it's incoming students, whether it's uh, student leaders, whether it's about connecting to the faculty and staff. Um, the sense of connectedness uh, helps people feel welcome. And if the red zone had a middle name, connectedness would be it. Uh, the Red Zone really is all about connecting uh, incoming students to uh, student leaders and other incoming students as well as staff across the campus. Now, the Red Zone is not a new uh, service on campus. We've enjoyed the Red Zone for about seven years. Um, the purpose of the Red Zone really is to welcome students uh, throughout the summer and uh, not only get them to connect with people, but also they, they will learn about uh, campus resources as well as uh, find out about how to get involved and the importance of getting involved, and then we encourage them to register for orientation. And this all happens through the lens of a senior uh, and very successful student. But what the AIF has allowed us to do is to uh, add a whole new dimension to the, the red zone. It's kind of this dimension that exists everywhere and all around us. So it's a dimension that comes to students wherever they are. They've got a cell phone, a laptop, a computer. It's our virtual red zone. And I wanted to introduce you to three people that have been instrumental in the evolution of the red zone. Uh, they are Mike Kazabowski who is the uh, Orientation and Student Experience Assistant in the Center for Student Community and Leadership Development. He's headed up the Red Zone for about six years now, and he's a very proud, uh, proud, Guelph, uh, proud York grad. Soon um, to be York, York grads are Lindsay Ostreter and uh, Claire Simpson, who through their time at York have been extremely involved. They've held positions uh, such as College Council President, and they've been uh, very in involved in various positions in the Red Zone. Um, and through the magic of technology and in the spirit of the virtual red zone, they are joining us live from Barry Hall. Hey! Hi! <laughs> How's it going? Good. Good. So I am here. Oh, I'm here with a hundred or so of my closest friends uh, in uh, Accolade, and we've got some questions for you about the red zone. Is that okay? Yeah. yeah? Okay. Mike, we're going to start with you. So where are you guys and what's going on right now? Uh, right now I'm sitting in uh, the Red Zone Lounge, which is a very Hall 1005. 
And uh, to my left, there's a small group of students who just come over from their advising enrollment appointments, and they're sitting here chatting with some of our Red Zone student ambassadors and asking questions about what it's like in their, for the first year, and uh, just getting a general feel of what campus life is going to be like for them. Great. Lindsay, you were around last summer. How many uh, students did we welcome to the Red Zone last year, last summer? We had about 6,500 students. That's a lot of students, Lindsay. Yeah. <laughs> so what do you think the role that the Red Zone played in connecting those students to York University? I think the most important thing was that the students got to interact with upper year student leaders in a really interesting and unique space. Um, and it's not just anecdotal, we actually have facts too from students. So one student said that um, the best thing about the visit to the Red Zone was that I was able to sit around with other students that had many of the same questions, which I got answered by the knowledgeable Red Zone student staff. And then also 91% of the students who visited us said they felt either a great deal or considerably welcome to York as a result of attending the Red Zone. Great. Claire, so how is this virtual Red Zone going to happen? How is it going to work? Well, we're looking to create a community and a discussion, a two-way flow of information through our blogs, social media, getting everybody on Uconnect so they're involved and we're getting feedback from them and giving them what they want and when they want it. Students can contact us from the, the comforts of their own home, which is really great for them and for us because we've got that added connection with them. Great, thanks. And Mike, finally, uh, what, what's the role of social media in connecting with uh, students as they transition to York? Uh, I think it's a, it's a very important role, and uh, York University has this reputation of being a, a commuter school, and that often comes off as a, a, a bit negative, and I think it's, uh, it's actually quite the opposite. It's, it's a positive, and social media is something that, uh, that can just build the, the strength of that positivity. Um, we have a lot of students who are all around the GTA, not just on campus, and all around the world. And social media can play a, a massive role in connecting all those students and allowing them to communicate. Um, an example of that is kind of like um, our families at home. That's our immediate community. And when we leave home to go to school or work during the day, uh, it's not like we cease being part of that community. And um, I see. York's campuses as being very similar to that. And when students leave uh, the campus, they shouldn't become disconnected with the community here. Um, and social media is a relatively you know, new set of technology that can help us stay in touch with those students and connect them. Um, and I think that's, uh, that's what's most important about it. And we're trying to utilize that here in the Red Zone. And I think we'll really see that come to fruition this summer with some of the plans that we have. Great. Thank you so much. We'll catch you later at the end for the Q&A. Sounds good. OK, thank you. Bye. Bye. Hello nursing students, my name is Anthony and I am Alessandro and we're from the Health Aid Network bringing you guys another weekly announcement. So just a couple things to keep on your to-do list. Coming up on October 17th is your first midterm. So just a reminder that uh, the chapters will be from 1 to 6 and that it's the RNC content only. So a great way to practice for your exam is to network. And through networking you can develop study groups with your peers and you can find the best possible way to study for that exam. And a great way to network, and it was actually advised to us by our peer mentors, is to join NSAE, which is our Nursing Student Association at York University. And NSAE throws a lot of different events. One event that NSAE is holding, uh, actually this week on Thursday, from 5 to 8 p.m. is the, uh, their annual Scrubathon. So for nursing students, come on over and you could meet the faculty and staff, even peers inside your program, and make friends, have fun at the same time. Once again, everybody, thank you very much for listening to us. If you do have any questions, please feel free to contact us through Moodle, Facebook, and of course our email. Thank you and have a great day. Bye. Moving on to the sense of capability, I think, um, I think it's fair to say transitioning to university is tough on a whole bunch of different levels. 
But when you think about the majority of our students coming from high school, the learning in high school is very different than the learning that happens in university. So building a sense of capability is about developing academic skills, so learning skills, values, anything, knowledge, anything that will equip students to be prepared to learn in university. And uh, let's jump right to Jumpstart, which is a, a transition program uh, at Glendon College. Um, the project's lead is Rosanna Fergiuelli. Uh, Pro Professor Fergiuelli is the Associate Principal Student Services at Glendon College and the, the coordinator of the Glendon Student Exchange Program. For more than 20 years, she taught French language and literature in the French department at Glendon College. She is very interested in curriculum design and development and has published a number of French language manuals used in several universities in Canada and the United States. Have a look at this. I'm Rosanna Fergiuelli, Associate Principal Student Services at Glendon College. I would like to tell you about a new initiative called Jumpstart, Successful Transition to University. It is a one-week summer program that was offered last August to help first-year students make a smoother and more successful transition to university, both academically and personally. The aim of Jumpstart is to better prepare students with the roles and tasks of university study, to provide them with the necessary tools to master the basic academic skills and to facilitate their integration into their learning community so that they can be more active and engaged students. The primary objectives of Jumpstart are to foster academic success, contribute to personal growth, and promote a balanced, healthy lifestyle. Seventeen different sessions were offered and students learned how to master time management, improve note-taking skills, effectively prepare for exams, manage stress, and cope with exam anxiety, use library resources more effectively, and discover research tools that are at their disposal, acquire language learning strategies, gain self-awareness, set goals, and connect to university life. After each session, students were asked to complete an evaluation questionnaire and the comments and results were extremely positive. Students found the program to be both informative and beneficial. Because of the success of Jumpstart, this summer we will be offering it for the second time and the program will also be open to Kiel students. Given the very positive outcome, we have decided to offer a parallel French version called Démarrer du Bon Pied. We are very happy to be able to continue to offer Jumpstart and to support student success. Thank you, Rosanna. Congratulations. It's very exciting. Oh, Rosanna will be uh, joining us at the end for the Q&A, so if there's any questions about Jumpstart, you'll be able to ask her then. Thank you. All right. Hi, all health study students. I hope you're doing well today. My name's Leah, and this is Monique, and we're back from the Health Aid Network. So we're just going to tell you guys about some dates you want to put on your to-do list. The first one we have is our rough copy of your essay, which is due October 31st. And then afterwards, on November 7th, is the final copy of your essay. So guys, with all the essays we have to write, I can pretty much say that the pressure is definitely on and we may not know what to do. So it's been recommended by the upper year uh, health study students that we attend the academic anxiety workshop that's being offered on September 20th from 2.30 to 3.30 p.m. There you'll learn how to manage the stress and of course improve our grades. Doesn't that sound super awesome, Leah? It does. <laughs> so along with that, you may be wondering um, what you're most passionate about in the health industry and where you fit in. So the tip of the week is to say yes and speak up. Say yes to diff different opportunities that come knocking at your door because you don't know where it may lead you. And more than that, you can share the experience with others. All right, so just like Monique was saying, one experience you guys might want to try, and again, knock on the door, would be a health education and it's open on Mondays to Fridays from 8.30 to 4.30. It's in the South Ross Building, room 172. Uh, it's a great way to find peers 
just like you who have the same passions and interests, as well as, like she was saying, is find an area you're interested in in the healthcare system. Awesome. So if you have any questions, feel free to hit us up on Moodle, Facebook, or shoot us an email. Or you can even talk to us after class. We're here for your support. Thank you. All right. Bye, guys. So through, through the sense of academic culture, we help new students understand the core scholarly values and ethical principles of the university. And one way we can achieve this is by building the skill of inquiry, building community or curiosity, as well as getting students to be open-mindedness about things. So the educators in the room love those kinds of skills that we develop in students. And this were some of the skills that students learned in the science, the science first uh, learning community, which is our next project that we're going to highlight. Its project lead is Professor Logan Donaldson. For seven years, Professor Donaldson was a course instructor in the first year introductory biology course. Drawing from that experience and given the opportunity from the AIF, he created the Science First community. He is a neuroscience biochemistry researcher in the New Life Sciences building on campus and is also an advocate for high school science outreach programs through the Santa Fe Biogenius program. Take a look at this one. An onion, like a university community, is composed of a number of layers. No matter what layer you consider, they are all vibrant and interconnected. Over the past year, the Academic Innovation Fund has provided the means for me to create a learning community for first-year students called Science First. Through this program, students have a place where they can engage in a number of exciting activities that promote social interaction and lateral thinking. Now let's get back to that onion. Each layer, in fact, can be subdivided further and further to a skin that is only one cell thick. Here, our learning community members draw upon ideas from biology, chemistry, and physics to view an onion cell in an entirely different way using two lasers. One laser allows us to peer inside the cell. Another laser allows us to manipulate parts of the cell as if we were holding microscopically small tweezers. Let's face it, everything is more fun with lasers. The learning community is open to every first year student. It's no surprise that the students who join want to get the most of their university experience. You never know, many of these students could become the next great catalyst in our society. I recruited a number of student peer mentors to attend each monthly event during the pilot year. The first year students were amazed at how a third or fourth year student could pack so much extra involvement into their schedule and still excel academically. The Science First Learning Community gives first-year students access to these wonderful role models. In addition to peer mentors, first-year students can cultivate real personal relationships with professors, staff researchers, and graduate students. When we're all in the laboratory together, in the trenches of discovery, we're on a first-name basis. I become Logan, not Professor Donaldson. The first-year community, I hope, is just the beginning one important step towards building a socially conscious, scientifically grounded mind. Here we are back at the onion. From the outside, the skin is our learning community. Looking through the layers of social and academic interactions, we are led to the deepest layer of them all. Our students see that York University is a community with them at the heart. Thank you, Logan. I don't think anybody in this audience will look at an onion the same way. <laughs> Congratulations, and Logan will also be joining us at the end for the Q&A. Hello, psychology students. My name's Anthony. And I'm Alessandro. And we're here again to bring you guys another weekly announcement brought to you by HealthAid Network. A uh, couple more two things to think about that are upcoming dates put on your agenda. Uh, coming up in December 3rd, December 3rd there's going to be your first midterm. And also, by December 1st, you need to have in your 2% for your lab reports. Also, you should get your labs done earlier than later because you don't want to be juggling studying for your exams and your lab work at the same time. If you are nervous, much like myself before exams, uh, we uh, went and visited the Counseling and Disability Services, which holds lots of seminars on things like note-taking, uh, lecture, 
uh, lecture material and also on multiple choice tests. So doing these kinds of seminars will help you guys build your strategies and things like that when it comes to the test, or even if you're just striving for that A+. If you guys are looking uh, for more information on the counsel counseling and disability services, you can go and visit them on the York U website or at the Bennett Center at 101. So we all know during exam times, we're all gonna be stressed. I know I'm gonna be stressed. So I want you all to partake in a little activity. So I want you all to close your eyes, okay? And as you listen to the sound of my voice, you're gonna get sleepier and sleepier and sleepier. You're gonna get so sleepy that your head's gonna be so heavy and it's just gonna drop. And at the sound of my snapping finger, you're gonna be at the first ever York Hypnosis Show. On October 17th from seven to nine, here at Curtis Lecture Hall I, York will be holding its first ever hypnosis show. So if you wanna see a real life applied psychological therapy session in the works, please come by. It's free admissions for all York students. And if you guys do have any more questions or concerns, you can contact us on our Moodle page, our, web, our Facebook page, or even just email us. Thank you, have a good week. Thank you. So finally, we have this sense of purpose. And what I like about the sense of purpose is, is that when a student develops a strong sense of purpose, no matter how challenging school gets or life gets, they are committed and they will persist because a sense of purpose connects where they're at in that moment in time in their academic career to a vision or a purpose or a goal. So that's why I like that, this one. And the sen developing a sense of purpose is, uh, was instrumental in the success of the Making Connections pilot. Making Connections was a half-day campus experience that was piloted through the month of June to incoming students in the Faculty of Health as a way to introduce students to the faculty's vision of keeping people healthier, longer, and the agents of change concept, a purpose-building activity was facilitated. Students were asked to think about their personal values and aspirations and how they will contribute to keeping their people healthier, longer throughout their time at university and beyond. Students were then encouraged to transfer the commitments to a mural, which you'll see on the screen soon. The central purpose of creating a community mural was to help students understand the meaning and purpose of their academic work, encourage them to take ownership of their university career, and empower them by giving them a visual voice. And so I would like to welcome Agata Stipka to the stage. Agata is a York University alumna and recently completed the graduate program in educational psychology um, and leadership studies at the University of Victoria. She is currently a research associate at Stone. Have a seat. Catherine. How are you? Good, this is wonderful. Yeah. Great way to celebrate. Hello, everybody. <laughs> um, so there we go, there's the mural. Amazing. Um, were there any, oh, look, and it's everywhere. Yes. Wow. <laughs> Welcome to the mural voice. Welcome to the right? mural. <laughs> so were there any visions that stood out for you? Um, that's tough. I don't think I can just select one because there were hundreds of um, these visions and contributions. And not only did students uh, write phrases, but they also drew photographs. Um, but if we're thinking about a uh, student's sense of purpose, what was really interesting about this is students really related it to the purpose of their program. So for example, um, the kinesiology students really thought about what is it that kinesiologists do. So for example, it was about staying active and playing sports and really getting that healthy diet into your lifestyle, leading the balance. Then the psychology students, they really focused on the mind. Um, so having that optimistic perspective, um, getting that eight hours of sleep, um, so very tangible sort of um, visions. And then the health policy and management students really focused on um, the social citizenship and being a responsible citizen. One quote that did stick out for me that was sort of funny uh, was one student wrote, um, keep your friends close and your professors closer. So I think that really had to do with the student success piece. Um, so that's sort of what I took away. I'm like, good advice. That's cool. I'm actually really surprised that um, the depth of some of the, the visions, considering that this is their first time on campus mm -hmm. and they don't know anybody, that they got pretty deep. Mm -hmm. Why do you think that was? And I mean, we did have activities with the students where um, they were introduced to the vision of the faculty as well as their programs. Um, so they did have a little preamble. Um, but I think 
um, the students really took a different perspective in terms of not looking at sort of traditional means to, pe to keep people healthier longer. So some of the things like using pharmaceuticals or maybe, maybe in invasive surgeries, which are all very important. But students looked at it from a broader perspective. So really the preventative aspects. Students talked about recycling. Mm -hmm. um, they talked about being friendly with your neighbors um, as well as assisting your neighbors. So. Um, I think our students do have a broader view of the world, mm -hmm. um, and they are, they are looking for change and different ways to uh, make an impact in society. That's great. So what do you think we can do to help students become more motivated and purposeful in their engagement? Hmm. I think as educators, we need to um, recognize that each student's sense of purpose is going to be different, mm -hmm. um, and that it is ever-changing. It's not... Um, stagnant and depending on where they are in the student life cycle that may change um, so for example a student entering university's sense of purpose may be very different than from a student who is ready to sort of um, go into society and make that impact um, but I think while they are at university and I mean the career center already does a lot of wonderful things with the students um, is to again in engage them in, in the dialogue and help them reflect on what is their sense of purpose throughout their uh, different stages of the university career. Um, things like the clays and the rate positions and the work study positions, those are really wonderful opportunities for students to um, explore what is their purpose. Um, so giving them opportunities to make a meaningful contribution so that they feel good about it and they could use it for experiences um, that will lead them into their careers post-education. Cool stuff, Agatha. Mm -hmm. Congratulations. Wonderful. It's awesome. So, You'll come back at the end? Yes. Okay. Thank you Thank very you. much. <laughs> Thank you. So was anyone expecting another announcement maybe just about now? Instead, I thought maybe we should actually explain what they were all about. So I'm going to invite uh, uh, Arusa Kasmi on stage as well as the amazing students who have been giving you announcements. Um, Arusa is actually the person behind the announcements. She's the coordinator of the Health Aid Network and Student Success Programs, a York University alumna and recent graduate of her master's in education specializing in student leadership. Congratulations for that. Thank you. And congratulations for this. Did you want to introduce uh, who our fantastic announcers are for everybody? For sure. So you probably have heard their names as they've made their announcements. So we have Monique here, who's in health studies, and she's in the third year of her program. She's been a senior work study student with us, and she's actually been supervising our peer mentors and our class reps. We have Anthony next to her, who is in his third year in, psych in uh, kinesiology, who's been a peer mentor with us as well as a class rep, the person who makes the announcements. Next to him, we have Leah, who's in kinesiology as well. She seems to be an even shift a little bit here. Um, so she's in kinesiology as well, going into her third year. And then we have Alessandro, who in psychology in his first year, uh, he just finished and will be going into his second year. And so I just wanted to give them a round of applause yeah, for all those announcements. Yeah, that's great. So Arusa, can you tell us what these announcements are all about? So you probably have noticed when they came out, they addressed you as if you were students in psychology or nursing or health studies. We know you're not students, obviously. Um, but that's how the announcements are made in those classes. So the classroom announcements are made in all four courses in, across the Faculty of Health. And basically, it's our way of getting advice from upper-year students in the program out to first-year students directly in the classroom. And it's meant to provide information on academic resources, ways to get involved on campus, important deadlines that are upcoming, all just in time when students actually need that information. And next year, we hope to reach 4,900 first-year students. Wow. So we're very excited. That's a lot. Yes, it is. <laughs> so have they worked? So, we, yes, they have worked. <laughs> Good, okay. Um, so we actually finished a survey recently where we had 980 responses, nice. so about 50%. Um, and we found that overall it was really increasing students' awareness of the resources that are there to help them, ways they can get involved in important dates. But more than that, I think what was most exciting was that about 50% of students were actually using that information. So they either went to an event or to a resource that we had advertised. And so I think it's nice to see students going from just increasing their awareness to actually using that information and taking that next step. Amazing. And so from what I understand, this is just not about in the classroom. 
there's, there's activities and things that happen outside of the classroom too. Do you want to talk about that? Yeah, so for example, the students I have with me, um, the students who are in the program itself who made these announcements and then the upper year students who give them advice, those students actually meet bi-weekly for two hours where they participate in different activities related to leadership development as well as around academic success. And um, I think instead of me saying what we found with them, whether it's been successful, I think I'll just ask you guys um, in terms of what has your experience been and what's something that uh, you'll take away from this? Uh, well, I've been a program, like Arusa said, for two years now, and I'll be doing it in my fourth year as well next year. And one of the reasons why I've stayed in the program and I've really taken a lot out of it is that it teaches you something that you don't learn in a biology or an anatomy class. It teaches you things that build the entire character, not just the ac academic side, but more on the leadership side, public speaking and things like that. So by being a part of this program, you learn different kinds of things that you're not gonna get necessarily out of a academic course. So I think that's one of the main things I'm gonna take forward and into the rest of my life. I think for me, one of the biggest things that I take away from the experience is not only the friendships I've gained, but also like learning what it means to be an agent of change. And so being a part of the Faculty of Health, we've been pioneering this idea. And more than that, I've gotten a sense of belonging here at York. And so I wish to continue that. And that's why I stay here. Okay, so one of the major things that I would like to say and stands out would be uh, all the opportunities and experiences that I've been able to have so far within the two years. And I continue to do it for another two years. And it's just, I never thought I'd have this chance and all the things that I've done and the challenges, it pushes you more and you become, you grow more as a person that you had no idea you could do before. Uh, I think one of the major benefits is just being able to be the person who could provide the opportunity uh, to provide students with the opportunity to feel connected with their their school and with York because you know as you know York is a huge place different events going on and it's, it's impossible to actually know everything that's going on so giving the opportunity to students to know everything about York and uh, what we're about uh, is really benef beneficial to me thank you guys so much yeah. I did not pay them to say that I swear <laughs> I didn't know what they were gonna say so I'm, I'm glad to hear that it's been really great a couple of other students have talked about how it's been a catalyst for them really helping them discover what they're passionate about because we really pushed that student engagement piece getting involved on campus and making a difference in students lives so it's amazing. been really great amazing really good congratulations to you Rusan. thank you all so much You'll come back for the Q&A just in a bit. I think we'll just stay here. You can join us oh. for the Q&A. Well, yeah. I have one more thing to talk about, and then, oh, yeah. Oh, right. <laughs> no, Or you can, you're free to stay if you want, or go, whatever. It's casual. <laughs> These are my close friends, whatever I'll you want. I'll come back. I'll come back. <laughs> <laughs> it's my show, Rusa, not yours. <laughs> um, so what do you get when you bring uh, the innovators behind the AAF projects together? you get the sparking of an idea. And that's exactly what happened when three of the AIF project leads got together, who all had projects around incoming student transitions. The enrollment appointment, the online enrollment appointment, the virtual red zone, as well as making connections, they all address different senses, but when you bring them together, they address the five senses in Lizio's model. So making, them, uh, making the sum of, uh, of all three um, a comprehensive transition program that is research uh, guided, intentional, and very comprehensive. So beginning this summer, the 600 kinesiology students who are in the online enrollment uh, appointment pilot are also in uh, UStart, which is an incoming student transition pilot, uh, which is beginning now. Uh, they will experience, uh, as I said, the online enrollment appointment, a virtual community, as well as an on, uh, on one day on campus event uh, that we're still going to call Making Connections. And so the hope is, um, is that uh, we are creating a model or a system that the whole campus could consider when thinking about transforming the, uh, the, the way we um, transition our students into, into university. So I think on a day where we're celebrating the innovations behind the AIF, that we should also celebrate and acknowledge the fact that the AIFs themselves uh, sparked more collaboration, more innovation, and systems. And so I think by the example of, of UStart, we can say that the AIFs are moving us from silos to seamlessness. 
So on that note, I would like to welcome uh, everyone back on stage. Arusa, you can come back now. Um, and while they're making their, and then also Logan and uh, Rosanna, if you would like to come up on stage too. And while everyone's making their way up on stage, um, I just want to take this opportunity to thank everybody for uh, sticking around this afternoon and listening to this presentation. Um, I hope that you've learned uh, a little bit about our projects, uh, the, the Lizio Five Senses model that we're using, uh, and the, um, the, the continuum and, and where everything fits in the continuum. So while uh, you're pondering your questions, I've got a couple to, to start us off. Um, Rose, hi. Hi, Rosanna. Hi, Logan. How are you? Hi. Oh, and we've got our, our red donors here, too. Um, can I start with, uh, with you, Rosanna? Yeah, sure. So like, <laughs> jumpstart. It's, yes. it's great. And yes. you're expanding. So yes, what do you think made it so successful? And I think we've got a, do we have a microphone? Oh, okay. Wow, I don't know. Uh, I think that um, there was a need. I think that students welcomed this opportunity and we were able to provide um, a program for them that helped them. And uh, the feedback has been very positive. So that's encouraging us to go ahead and to expand. And uh, we're looking forward to the to this next session in, in August. Amazing. Congratulations Thank once you. again. Thank you very much. Uh, Logan, I wanted to bring you into the discussion too. Okay. Um, uh, that was a cool video. Thanks. You have fun in that lab, don't oh, you? Oh, we always have fun. <laughs> so who else is involved in the, in the science first? Oh, I, um, in this uh, particular program, I constantly rely on the charity of my colleagues. Um, we actually had a first unit on bee genetics. Um, my, my colleague, Amro Zayat, actually brought the bees to us. We didn't have to go to the apiary. Um, we had a book club um, in conjunction with the DC Science Library, John Dupuy. Thank you very much. And uh, that laser show that you saw um, was done um, with Roger Liu and uh, the biophysics group. Cool. Very cool. Lots of fun. Yeah. Um, any questions out there in the, in the audience for any of the AIF leads? I guess we answered it all. <laughs> That's great. Well, I think on that note then, I will once again thank everybody um, for participating and, and listening to us this afternoon. And I also want to thank all of the innovators on stage for all of the fantastic work that you've done. Your passion is, um, is definitely contagious. Um, oh, and then the other, you, you, you three up there too, thank you to, to all of you. Um, and I think uh, I would maybe take this opportunity to encourage everyone in the audience to give you all a round of applause for that hard work that you do. Thank you so much.